Hello and welcome back to another episode of our limited podcast series. How you been? Where Grace and I catch up with old friends and see exactly that, how Mm -hmm. they have been. This podcast is sponsored by DoorDash. And Grace, in honor of our guest, I'm going to go on DoorDash and order us some super fruit smoothies. Uh, Oh, there's your first hint if the title (laughs) didn't already give away who our guest is. Today, we're catching up with Scott Hoying. You might know him from Pentatonics, the little known group. You might know him from Superfruit. You might, like we know him now, as the co-creator of the all-girl group Citizen Queen and the kids' acapella group Acapop. I'm literally tired I'm, just hearing all the things he does. He literally schedules out his day hour by hour, and that's um, ironically how he gets things done. You'll hear all about it on this episode of How You Been with Scott Hoying. Mamie, I think it's about time we ask Scott. How you been? I've been great. Hi, <laughs> first of all, appreciate you'll, you'll, you'll that you're matching so our loud energy. With the question. I was like, I got flustered. I know um, it's no, such I've a massive great. question for something that's so casual, but in this last year and everything, it feels like you it's know, a heavy question to ask people. We're really putting yeah, you on the yeah. spot. I mean, I've been as good as one can be during these times. Good. Um, I mean, <laughs> I've been, I've been like. Staying positive and trying to keep a routine and keep a schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but also, I've been sad at times. Wow, we got. Hey. Wow. This isn't not too deep, Grace. I know. We just got deep in like the first 20 fucking <laughs> seconds. No, but this is what I appreciate because yeah. one, uh, you seem like via the social media, you've been pretty good. I would say thriving. <laughs> thriving in a sense. And also that one, we're catching you speaking of routine and doing things that like make you happy. Thank you for making time for us in between um, Jimmy Kimmel and Hoda and whoever the co-host <laughs> is now. <laughs> oh, my God. no, thank you. I, I mean, of course, I was so pumped to hang out with y'all. And just oh, absorb God. your good energy. <laughs> yeah. Well, sweet, because we know you're a busy friggin' man. I busy think bee. I think I saw you drinking a green juice before we started. Is that correct? Um, it's actually matcha. Oh, matcha. oh, matcha do about nothing. It, Look at him go. Is that your preferred caffeine? Juice. Um, it has like tea caffeine. Okay. But it doesn't really hit like coffee, but I kind of like that. I mean, you need any sort of caffeine now because I'm going to get right into it. Pentatonics, um, <laughs> you're promoting a new album. Yes. Right? And you've also like I did the, the math via Wikipedia and Google. You guys have been together, what, 10 years now? 10 years. And we've released like 16 albums or versions of albums. Wait, it's, you it's, have it's... more albums than years? <laughs> yeah. What yeah, is this math? Because we, we always do a Christmas album every year or a deluxe right, right. version. And then we try to do, we've done two original albums. And then we did PTX Volume 1, 2, 3 classics. Like, mm. we just churn out the content. I'm not um, even going to lie to you, Scott. I don't know if I've told you this before, but back in my, like, little one stoplight town, like, fully in the sticks, they, they have no <laughs> idea what I do. And also, like, I use bad language, so they, they're not going to watch it. But when I went <laughs> home a couple years ago, I was a celebrity because they'd seen me online with you like they were like you're <laughs> friends with that boy from Panaton. yeah, yeah the and tall i was like one this that's is- maybe gay <laughs> <laughs> we're praying for him but we love that christmas album like it gave me so much street cred <laughs> i love that uh incredible so what's the album that you guys are promoting now it's called the lucky ones and mm-hmm. it's our second original album Ooh. Our first original album we've done in like six years almost, which is really crazy to think about. And wow. it's like our vulnerable, honest <gasps> album where we tell stories from just the past decade. Wow. And, um, and we feel like our songwriting's gotten better and we're, we're like really pushing the limits with our sound and trying to evolve. And so Ooh. this album is very exciting for us just personally. Well, I have a, I have a question. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. Because I, I was, <laughs> I've been in a band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How are we all? Like a Grammy award winning. <laughs> a little different. Uh, they had some oh, wait, Grammys wait, wait. at their shows. Some yeah. old women. Some old ladies <laughs> who wandered in off the East Village. I, wait, I've listened to your band. Kudzu. You sent them to me. Wait, what was yeah, the name? we talked it's, about it. It's a it. great name. Because I was like, let's write a musical together. Um, <laughs> yeah. I still haven't gotten him to agree to it. Um, but my question is since it's a cappella, like when you guys are actually composing the parts of a song, 
like normally be like, I think I'll do this on the guitar. Like, are you truly like, and then what about a whoop, whoop, bow, bow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so basically what we do is we let the producers and songwriters and people we work with, we just make a song, a, a normal version of the song, not acapella at all. Okay. okay. We have acapella in mind, but we, we let them just run with what they do because a lot of producers are like, I don't know how to do acapella, and so yeah. I'm not going to work with you. <laughs> and so a, a lot of them, we just like have like full on produced tracks. And then we go in and we kind of sometimes emulate those sounds. Oh, I want to be sometimes... a fly on the wall on that day so hardcore. Oh, just like, oh, yeah. is it more of a yeah. whoop or is it a whoop? <laughs> yeah, we're like, oh, me, 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 me. <laughs> but you know i mean obviously emulating instruments can be so cringe at times so it's sure. all about balance okay what's your out. least favorite like when an instrument pops up and you're like oh fuck they're gonna make me do that one like are there the ones that you like dread doing absolutely anything that's like high and synthy like mm. blah, blah, blah. Or something like that. That's just my impression of a Muppet. That's really... Yeah, that's no, I know, because... I mean, if you're into acapella, it, like, kind of works. It's like, oh, cool, it kind of sounds like dubstep. Um, but, like, if you're not in the acapella world, you're just like, what the literal fuck is going on? I'm dying. I want, th- I want this behind the music oh, so I know. bad. Well, that's a, I want you guys to release an album that has all of the, like, songs in their final form but then it has tracks of just separated tracks of the yes. songs. <laughs> um, just okay, all the individual question. tracks, yeah. Question about this most recent album that is a more personal album. Well, you're in a group. You have, uh, you know, five members in total now. Yeah. yeah. That how do you come to the consensus that now is the time for collectively all five of you to be very personal and vulnerable? Yeah, where, where other people like, no, let's do a Halloween album. Yeah, I got a creaky <laughs> door sound I've been working on. That's a, that's a really interesting question. Yeah, I think that it just naturally happened. We kept mm. putting off an original album because we were always touring and working on Christmas mm-hmm. stuff. And we were like working on little other projects and solo stuff. And so we just never really made time to do another original album and then i think we all just naturally felt it and i came to the group and was like it's probably time to do another original album because we've been a band for 10 years and we only have one um and like i just i don't want to sing other people's songs completely at our shows like let's tell our own stories type of thing and everyone was totally on the same page was thinking the same thing also it's got to be cool to have people then like that has to be the most exciting moments at a live show is when they're singing your songs yeah. along yes, with you. Definitely. No, you hit the nail on the head. Like anytime you write a hook that you came up with while you were like sleeping or something, and then you just like all of a sudden you're on a huge stage and people are screaming it back at you. It's yes. a, it's it's a very specific feeling. Um, wow. Um, it has I'm a, a, it's amazing to sing covers. It really is because it, it's fun to put creative spins on like songs everyone loves. Um, but there is there is a special magic to telling your own story. I'm just really imagining funny. you said a, a hook in your sleep. <laughs> You're sleeping. And you that go, always oh. happens to me. <laughs> Some... Write it down. Write it down. I wake, <laughs> I, I, I wake up. I sleepwalk, and I just am like, oh no, no, no. <laughs> you see it on your Nest Cam. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I have a follow up question. Yeah, go for it. Um, has being in pentatonic made you hate christmas yet well that's okay because you guys have very fair question your your christmas album had a blew up first go around and then it's like yeah this is a christmas sweet peeps. spot for us <laughs> yeah so are you now do you love christmas is this a sensitive spot because also do you feel <laughs> obligated every year to have to do another christmas mm-hmm. album um my honest answer is like obviously christmas is the happiest time of year and like that's a fun Mm. holiday to be a big part of he's Um, not gonna tarnish his brain and all of us i mean it it, people love our christmas music and we love making music that makes people happy and feeling like we have purpose so we we genuinely do like it i mean i guess the only times is like in march when we're on a zoom meeting like all right let's pick christmas songs for next year and i'm like literally march i think it's like a little too early because you have to start albums so early Right. So it really is Christmas all year long, but it's kind of just become like, like part of our life. And so I don't think anyone's like, there's no like sensitive, like, God damn it, I don't want to talk about Jesus being born right now. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do a Hanukkah album? 
I would love to. How about a flag day? <laughs> I, I, I think, Arbor. well, today is President's Day. I don't know when this is airing. Oh, but. <laughs> right. I didn't know so that until I got some bounce back emails. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone's. <laughs> we are definitely oh, oh, doing a President's Day office. album. I love it. It'd be like, wah, 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 and George Washington. Um, <laughs> okay. I think we need to uh, transition to the most important topic of this whole damn thing. What? Bubba. But oh, oh, he's right here. Okay, he let's yeah, let's transition little... out of Pentatonix and into the life of Scott Hoying, the individual. This is Whoa, where, hey. this is what I this is how I have been. Is Bubba? Okay. okay. Oh, please. also for you guys listening and not watching, Scott just stood up and we were blown away. He's wearing tie dye pants shorts. or shorts. <gasps> I am wearing tie dye. Oh my god, that's a beautiful little mop. I love it. <laughs> okay, that dog looks like it flies around with Peter Pan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That is both a dog and a ShamWow. Yeah. <laughs> but also, like, I want to tell it all my secrets. And I oh my feel God, like I I'd do. be safe. I, I do. thought, wait, when did you get this dog? Was this a quarantine coping mechanism pet? Right. And is that? Yes. That thing, did That's you just add water and it grew full size? Right. I thought it was a puppy. That wasn't a oh, puppet I... that you just had your hand in and operating. <laughs> yeah. Do you need to wash your arm? <laughs> I mean, it is a puppy. He's 11 months old. <gasps> and he is technically a mini golden doodle. But he's just growing quickly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're a, a very large dog. That's a very uh, exaggerated mini. <laughs> Wait, so then that means you got Bubba at like the top of the craziness, right? Yeah, I've always mm. wanted a dog, but we tour nonstop. Mm. And then, yeah. you know, when we all have that realization, oh, this pandemic's going to last for yeah. literally ever. This isn't ever. just a cute phase, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, let's get a dog. And then my <laughs> boyfriend and I lived together, and we were like, let's get a dog and raise a little boy together. And so, <laughs> I know, and it's been actually, like, incredible therapy for yeah. just the, these times, like, just to focus on something other than myself <laughs> yeah i mean it's 100%. a pretty intense to get a pet with mm -hmm. a partner yes. that you're seeing every day and now i'm like well what Except. happens when you go back on talking bubba fit underneath oh i know i don't well i mean i originally thought like he's a mini golden doodle so he can just sleep in my <laughs> little bunk with me and like but <laughs> now that he's the size of a horse i think that <laughs> he might not be able to come on tour but we'll see he's pretty chill Frank. yeah um the Okay, question with you, your boyfriend, and now Bubba, because Bubba, as I've seen online, has his own Instagram account. Bubba's live. He does. No, what is the Insta I, handle? Uh, B Bubba the Mini Doodle. Okay. There we go. Bubba the Mini Doodle, a little misleading because it's a big old doodle. <laughs> 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 Who now makes the decisions on the Instagram account? Does one of you take the responsibility to run the account? Mm. Do you mm. share the, the joy? We um, it's a very collaborative process. Okay. <laughs> so it's signed in on Mark's phone, um, but we just like do it together. Now, full yeah. disclosure, I have not followed uh, Bubba mm. the mini doodle yet. Do you write in Bubba's voice? And how how have you figured out? You know, because I run my dog's account, and she's a sassy little bitch with a lisp. Yeah, Mary yeah. took a long time to discern the character of Beans before she created. You know, <laughs> it's the... a lot of pressure to create someone's brand who yeah. can't tell you notes. That's true. Yeah. So what's and the voice of Bubs? It, there's a lot of pressure in that. Mm. And Mark and I actually talked about this. I was like, do we talk from perspective of Bubba? Right. Or do we just or do? But we here's what we landed on. Uh -huh. Just like saying things that he could be maybe saying but also are just kind of general mm. we found With that balance. Love. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of motivational uh <laughs> captions from Bubba. yeah we were just like let's make it boring <laughs> 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 we need more of that in the world yeah. to be yes, quite honest honestly and yeah instagram is very divisive and very polarizing so at least we can all know we can go to bubba's account for something non-offensive mm -hmm. something slightly uplifting something yeah you'll get some bland. emojis <laughs> Did you forget that one thing at the store? Now you can get snacks, drinks, and household essentials in 30 minutes with DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with restaurants you love right now and right to your door. And now you can get the grocery essentials you need with DoorDash too. Get drinks, get snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. I sound like I could use some sort of um, throat coat. Perhaps I should 
Consult my DoorDash. Ordering is easy. You open the DoorDash app, you choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Uh, you wouldn't believe, but about 12 hours ago, I actually used DoorDash to order Cheesecake Factory. Hence, you know, maybe my, why I sound like this this morning. And for a limited time, you guys can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter the code HHYB. That's 25% off up to $10 in value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code HHYB. B. Don't forget code HHYB for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Well, okay, so you're normally touring all the time, which yeah. is one of the reasons why it was a sweet spot to get a puppy. Mm. What are other things you found? Like, mm. I, this got to be the most you've ever been in one place. It's like you're a very busy person. Yeah. What are other things that you've been doing? Since you've been stationary, that like you might not have done before, We've or new seen hobbies. A lot of TikTok. We love it. You're, t- oh, you're the only yeah, person I, I follow on TikTok. It's oh very impressive. I am. So honored. has that also Thank grown you. out of this quarantine kind of uh, yeah situation? Sure. Yeah, I think that TikTok is like low pressure, and it's very fun, and mm. everyone on it is really supportive. It's just like a very lighthearted place, and it's like an environment where you can be really creative. And I felt this desperate need to be working all the time. I don't, we, we can unpack that. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> ske- I'm like scheduling every 30 minutes of my day. I'm like 1135, make a TikTok. Like, wow. I'm just like, so wow, it's, it's been a nice creative outlet and something to do. And so, and, and um, I've like enjoyed that a lot, but yes, every, I've been doing so many new things during quarantine. I've just like tried to involve myself in set myself in as many projects as possible. Like started a girl group, started a kids group. Yes. Well, okay. Um, no. Ours are, uh, ours are like, I've started, you know, like knitting. I got and learning to read. And I, you're like, I created an, I'm the, you know, Mark yeah. Cuban of acapella. <laughs> My boyfriend bought me this cow head that I glued together for uh, 17 hours. And that was a big week. Uh, but okay. I have so many questions. Oh, oh, yeah. One, you've started a girl group. And two, you've started a kids acapella a uh, group is it a group or is it like a foundation is it's it an kind, it's, it's kind of like a kids bop thing so yeah, it's, yeah. it's music for kids sung okay. by kids um and it's all acapella and there's like 20 i don't know how many 30 cast members now and all of wow. them are in different videos and yeah it's been okay, really fun quick question well this is i guess a two-parter <laughs> that is the opposite of quick i know one <laughs> how do you well how do you discover the kids yes. that work with this and then two how do you tell a kid that they're not good at acapella or their parents? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I, I, I just go up to the kid and I'm like, you are not good enough. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't scar you. you. No, I, I it's, we put out like a flyer and a bunch of kids auditioned and then like a lot of choir teachers and like kids groups um, throughout the nation. They like all talk and send each other things. Oh, cool. um, and then we got a ton of auditions and we kind of go through and um pick kids but yeah it is really hard when a kid gets a call back or another call back and then they don't end up getting it um oh. have you had to deal with any kid divas like to me this is dance moms and you are abby lee miller yeah, <laughs> yeah honestly no kids are so i think that's why i've enjoyed doing aquapop so much is because kids are so nice <laughs> they're like wow. so e- they're so innocent and easy to work with and they're just so happy to be there and they work really hard and it's it's like it's so wholesome it's kind of like refreshing it's like oh i like this little wholesome world yeah definitely well on the flip side you started a girl group yeah yeah citizen queen how so, did that happen i am gay okay <laughs> oh so you guys is- we got the exclusive wow yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> anyone out there looking to the- you know, start a band that's yeah. specifically female. There is one requirement. There is you one requirement. You must be a gay man. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I'm just like obsessed with watching singers online. And, mm-hmm. and my friend Ben, who arranges for Pentasonics and we started Pentasonics together, he has always wanted to start a girl group. And so we just found girls through like Instagram and we like put out a little like flyer as well. And people auditioned and 
It I was, just love it was picturing so you on Sunset Boulevard with actual printed flyers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how I used to like, like, do for comedy yeah. for girls who sing well. <laughs> They're going straight into the trash. <laughs> yeah, they're like, oh, he's creepy. Um, <laughs> but I think that's but, so great. You really seem to have made a priority of like sharing the wealth of like really going out there and being mm-hmm. like behind the camera and like putting talented people like lifting them up. That's very, very cool. Oh, thank you. Thanks for saying that. I, I really enjoy finding talent and then like producing and being part of the creative process. I mean, obviously I'm as anyone would be, I'm obsessed with the being on stage and performing and singing, but I really, really do like the behind the scenes stuff a lot. And, um, I've found like a deep passion for that in the past couple of years. That's so cool. And then are you, mm-hmm having to be a house mother to make sure all the girls mm. get along. Like this is very you know, and facts dream. of life. Mm. Oh, I yeah. 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 Definitely <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely been a mentor because I've lived this exact life mm-hmm. and, um, and our, our management, we have the same management pentatonics and citizen queen. And they've been really good mentors too. And it's, it's funny to see the girls kind of going through things mentally that you go through in a group that I'm like, I have been there. Yeah. Um, but I, but it is nice to be able to bring that calm kind of like, yeah, this happens. You're good. Yeah. Like, don't Quick panic. Question. Have you started embezzling yet? Ooh, yes. Because I know that's a requirement <laughs> yeah. for the man up, uh, you know, Pearlman of Orlando. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's why when I you get the made for TV movie <laughs> of the Scott Hoying story, mm-hmm. we have to talk about this part of the movie when it all yeah, goes I want, down. I want my story to be interesting. So I've got to do some scandalous things. Tax <laughs> evasion, embezzlement, blah, blah, blah. I think Paul Bettany should play an older Scott. <laughs> I have you don't been know watching who WandaVision? Paul is. Oh, I have not, but I can see wait, that. Wait, WandaVision? Yes. Who is he playing? Vision. Is- oh, he's like a that's hot, him. He, he was, was like a was hot, either Wanda older, or Vision. <laughs> rich man with like, you know, a little bit of a red beard when it comes in. Anyway, just think about it. Think yeah, about I, it. I love that. I love, love him. That. I've been watching that show nonstop. It's so good. Um, how did they get their name, Citizen Queen? Mm. One of the girls came up with it. I love um, it. Nina in the group was like, what about Citizen Queen? Well, I, the, the name was actually like such an intense process. We had like 50 million yeah. names, like Mirror Mirror. And you say it like that. Uh, <laughs> and then there was a few others too. There was like, oh, I can't think of them right now. W- oh, it doesn't it. matter because they didn't make the cut. They didn't. No, exactly. Yeah, they're, they're gone. Um, but yeah, Nina came up with it and it, Every so many people had to agree on it, right? Yeah. Um, and everyone loved it. I love it. Nina's like, "What about Citizen Queen?" You look at her laptop, and she's on GoDaddy. Are you <laughs> buying? <laughs> she's on like WordGenerator.com. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Now, have you done any? I mean, you are nonstop working. You're constantly yeah. finding projects to do. Have you done anything that isn't a financial revenue stream for you? Like, yeah. are you? Are you? <laughs> Are you baking bread? Are you mm-hmm. like getting into collecting coins? I don't know. Wow. You're do. asking about not... hobbies and the answer is no. Oh, cool. Me either. No. <laughs> no, I, yeah, we've done all, we've done, we've been through all the phases of quarantine where we like bake bread. I just yeah. bought like a little like electronic garden to make basil and like, <gasps> um, and that. then obviously a hobby is drinking. Yes, Memory, I know. I was telling Grace. Them. I dropped off a yep. cocktail to your house. The Scott I High it. Note. It was, it was, I, I took a picture of the ingredients because I want to remake it. That's how much I love. Yay. So cute. Yeah. And just for all other guests of this podcast, that is not a uh, standard for every guest that comes on yeah. here. That's a totally separate. Special. Yeah, I, I will say. I felt honored. Booze has been helpful mm-hmm. in quarantine. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it has been very helpful. And then a lot of video games. I'm like a nerd that plays video games all the time. Have you um, started a Twitch? Uh, are you thinking in that arena? I, you know, I've been watching Tyler Oakley's Twitch yeah. sometimes, and I'm like, I want to do this kind of. But I like to play the same game and become Tetris. obsessed. It becomes like a comfort game, and then I'll play it for 500 hours. Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if I can like bring the variety like Tyler does with every day a different game. He's yeah, I see him constantly tweeting about new Twitch streams that I'm like, this is impressive. The amount of effort that is <laughs> yeah. going into this. And I don't know what any of these words are of these games. You guys No, but- I just learned. Uh, I didn't learn how to TikTok, but I just joined it like we can't Twitch. Yeah, I've we never can't. followed an account faster, by the way. I was like, 
thank God for this. Okay. Yeah. Well, now you've inspired me. Now I'm actually going <laughs> to do some. Yeah. Would you like to play a game? I would love to play a game. Ooh, it's game time. It, excellent. It's game time. Excellent. <laughs> um, okay. So we were, I was trying to think of a pun for this, and Grace yeah. and I had the same pun. So the name of this game is Ahoying, matey. <laughs> <laughs> Really good. Basically, that's what great. And I've I've never received that pun before. So, are you out of your mind? Are Isn't you that wild? Who do you it's hang always... out with? <laughs> I thought people Apparently, like... people with no creativity. If I was a, a fan, I would be showing up at your concerts with like life, <laughs> life rafts, <laughs> just fully them. dressed as a pirate. <laughs> totally. Okay, so what I did is I found like nautical phrases, okay, that uh, or nautical words. That are also kind of naughty. Okay, so I love that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to like tell you the definition of this word in the nautical term and then the naughty term. And then you have the to guess naughty what it is. culture. So here's an example. This is a phrase. The rest of them are like one word. Here's the okay. phrase. OK, this is something you might hear a captain say. The nautical definition is to evacuate the roof of the rear cabin. The naughty definition would be like doing an enema before a night out. <laughs> well then what do i do so then the answer to that would be clear the poop deck <laughs> oh so, my god i'm gonna be so bad at this Wait, okay, no, so, was uh, that's the to, only phrase that's no, the she only was phrase. trying to quiz me on this before we started just to like do a test round and i thought it was gonna be really hard it gets easier so yeah. it's basically there's two definitions for the same word it'll, it'll be, be a single word guess what two the word is okay. Oh, okay 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 here yeah. we go so the nautical definition is a boat toilet the naughty okay. definition is something you might enjoy getting oh i'm trying to um the uh all i can think of is lavatory but that doesn't make sense um, no think of something you enjoy getting getting a cocktail <laughs> oh guys i thought this would be better i, I i'm sorry my brain I, my brain is shutting down and i'm panicking <laughs> I so that, it was head. They call a toilet on a boat a head and something you might enjoy getting. Oh, I did head. not know that at all. Oh. I only well, now, know things about music. If it's about the world in general, it's probably it. not in well, my now brain. Now we're learning. Now we're learning. <laughs> now you're going to be a captain. I'm going to play along with you, too, and see if I can help. Okay, okay great. That, that, that's helpful. Nautical version is to make progress windward in a zigzag course. Say that one more time. Well, you're not going to know the nautical. Uh -huh. To progress... <laughs> windward through a zigzag course windward okay the naughty version is something drag queens do to their face oh beat yes yeah oh, we did it okay great perfect okay <laughs> okay next one the nautical definition is bringing a boat into a harbor inch by inch the naughty version is when you get close to orgasm but you don't let yourself do it and you kept getting closer but you don't let yourself oh, edging do it. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa. It's so educational. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the nautical version or definition is the crease between individual strands of rope. The naughty version is something Mamrie is often called in the UK. Ooh. <laughs> oh. It, I mean, I, gorgeous. Oh, thank you, God bless. But it's a four letter <laughs> word. <laughs> oh. Uh,. The UK um, loves this word. I don't even know if we're allowed to uh, say it on the podcast. <laughs> it's a cunt. I have um, a so that's the actual I, I, <laughs> space I, in I, between I, little wow. pieces of rope. a real nautical term? A real, a cunt line. Spelled C-U-N-T? C-U-N-T. Wow. Working on a boat is nasty. They need to, <laughs> they need to workshop nasty. new names, possibly. Yeah, exactly. It's so nasty. Okay, here. I will do one or two more. The nautical definition is when two ships are side by side. The naughty version is something I might pull out when I want to get my way. <laughs> I was going to be gross and say a tampon. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, I, I'm struggling with this until um, you pull out when you want to get your pull way. Out when you want to get your way. Oh, you're like. Oh, uh, like your titties? A breast. Your, a breast. A breast. <laughs> wow. You mean two boats yeah, I mean, next to like, each other is not titties? <laughs> this is 
<laughs> That's the way that Mamrie ends every pitch meeting when she feels like it's not going well. She just takes one breast out. And says, just one. <laughs> Would you like to reconsider? <laughs> They're like, we're not interested in this film at all. And you're like, what about that? What about How this about film? Now? Are you 100% <laughs> sure about that? <laughs> um, okay, well, that was much harder than I meant for it to be. But wow. I think we all learned a little something about <laughs> ships. I think we learned a lot about a lot. We learned a lot about. I'm just blown Mamrie away by the creativity and how specific with... that game was. It was. I know. And also, Mamrie has come so up with games. Turns, dirty turns. I love it. You know, oh. but somewhere out there, it's great. A sailor is listening to this podcast, screaming every screaming, <laughs> just pissed. Just we pissed aren't getting off. it. Oh my god! Well, no, we learned about ships. We learned a lot about ships. We learned a lot about naughty, naughty things. Um, Sky, I before we wrap up with you completely. What is this year for you? What's mm. coming up? We know Pentatonix is promoting their album right now, but what else yeah. is on the horizon? I mean, I, I don't totally know because of obviously the pandemic, right. but yes, okay. we're promoting the lucky ones. Um, and then all the projects, Citizen Queen, Aquapop, we're putting out new music for Aquapop and Citizen Queen releases a single next week. It might be already out depending on when the Sarah's. Um, but yeah, it's just working every hour of the day and starting projects say. and being as creative as possible. And then hopefully touring someday in the future. Grace, I lo- like the man is creating an empire and you're like, but what else you got? Well, no, I'm saying <laughs> I'm saying if you're into like constantly creating things out of, you know, every hour of day you have, you should create the creative schedule for people like mm, make oh. your journal a template for how you manage your day and then start uh, marketing that to creative types. Because I'm just right. like. How do you what? Yeah. So you structure it hour by hour, okay? And then half what do you hour do? by half hour. I know. And then you get a <laughs> minute by minute. Yeah, no, I should do that. Yeah, I'll be like, if you want to be neurotic and psycho, <laughs> yes. <laughs> here's I'm the successful. tips. Absolutely. What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Me too. Oh, that Wait, makes birthday? so much sense. I'm September 22nd. I'm the last day. I'm on a cusp. Okay. Wow. I'm September 17th. I love that. Oh my god, we're in the so same fun. week. We'll have to throw a joint party. I would love you. to. I okay. would absolutely love to have a birthday with you. That sounds like a dream. <laughs> Hell fucking yeah. Well, thank It'll you so creative. much. <laughs> thank you so much for coming thank and you, chatting Scott. with us on your of busy course. schedule. It was so good, honestly, just to hang out with y'all. I this know. Is, uh, we, we we really wondered how you've been. And I feel like we got a little taste of how you've been. And yeah. um, just for people that don't know, where can they find you and everything that you're up to across social media shenanigans? Yeah, I am uh, at Scott Hoying on everything that there is, except for Twitch. Wow. <laughs> soon though, I feel like soon we planted the seed. Yeah. And that in like two weeks we're gonna see a Scott Twitch schedule of yeah. like a cartoon <laughs> Scott. Honestly, yeah. maybe. I've thought about it before. <laughs> All right. Well, we love you and you know, you've got to go do Congrats on everything. Fallon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thank or one of them damn Jimmies. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. I love you so much. What an absolute delight of a human. Oh, my gosh. Am I exhausted from how (laughs) wonderful he's doing in his life? I'm exhausted and hungry. Perfect. There's our smoothies from DoorDash. I hope that you guys get as uh, recharged as we are about to get after this absolutely delightful episode of How You Been with Scott Hoying. We'll see you next week on another episode of How How You You Been. Been.